tight hips this video is going to go over three exercises that can improve your hip mobility um, i'm bringing this episode back from march 2021 because it is still to this day one of my best videos when it comes to improving hip mobility and in the video itself we cover three positions of the hip that I believe that are the highest payoff. So we're going to go over hip external rotation, internal rotation, and hip extension. In those three exercises, I also give a follow-up exercise to improve further the mobility. My biggest issue, and I speak on this topic in this video, is most mobility and flexibility exercises that you see online or you know people that post mobility things it doesn't actually change at a you know cellular and muscular level all it really does is provides a stimulus to open things up in your warm up so then your workout feels better but the biggest issue that i see in my industry is no one talks about you know how to actually change tissue structure and this is where these three exercises come into play, and it's directly from kin stretch. And if you've been following me for a while, you understand that kin stretch is literally the only thing that will improve your mobility long term. And what do I mean by that? If I wanted more hip mobility, I need to understand that in order for my capsule to have more room and more workspace, I need to attack hip internal rotation, external rotation, and eventually hip extension. The biggest thing I see is when people constantly do these mobility or flexibility exercises in the gym, in their warm up before their workout, it doesn't actually change anything and they end up only getting a certain percentage of their workout. And I've spoken about this before so many times. So an example is if you're an individual watching this and you wanna improve your hip mobility and you've been doing the same exercises for mobility for years and nothing's changed, that's a problem. But the other issue too is that if you are struggling with hip mobility and you're doing things like squats, deadlifts, lunges, you're only gonna get the benefit of those exercises as much as your hips allow in the mobility department. If your hip mobility is terrible, in your opinion, or tight or needs improvement, and say that both sides of your hip are functioning at 50% of where it should be, then you're only gonna get 50% out of your back squat, your deadlift, your lunges, whatever you're doing. So people need to implement mobility work into their workouts, on their off days, whatever it is. So I wanted to bring this old episode back out of the darkness and educate all of you and give you practical things to actually do today to improve your hip mobility. So here we go. Speaking of YouTube, I started getting a lot of comments on my videos and um, someone started mentioning about um, how to improve hip mobility. And if you watched my previous um, episodes, I kind of talked about hip pain in general and how to improve hip mobility. But for the sake of this episode, I'm gonna go and show three mobility drills, three, that people need to be doing on a daily basis or at least like two to three times a week um, to really actually influence change at a muscular level. Cellular level, not a muscular level. I don't know what I was talking about that. But um, to kind of put in some context, so. If you are a gym goer, fitness enthusiast that, you know, you like go on YouTube and you watch like how to improve my hip mobility and someone gives you a couple exercises and mobility drills and whatever it is, but that doesn't really actually change at a cellular level of how your hip is designed, moves and everything like that. What it does do is prep your hips for exercises and the exercise just, you know, kind of loosens the joint, lubricates it and gets it prepped and ready for an exercise. 
that you choose to do that day. And the biggest one is like any hip mobility drill. There's some sort of like hip opener, some sort of hip flexor stretch. There's some sort of like a band that straps around your hip and you connect it to a fucking squat rack and it like yanks your hip socket and you get a deep like pigeon like stretch. And sure, like that will feel good in the moment, but it's not actually doing you any justice for long-term adaptability and change. So this is where the kin stretch principles go in. And this is where it kind of all stems from the comments that I got from uh, a couple tutorial videos on um, hip flexion. And, you know, looking back at that specific exercise, like I am working, um, what's it called? Uh, hip external rotation with flexion. But I don't know, I could be wrong on this. I wouldn't spend that much time with hip flexion specifically if I had a goal of just improving overall hip mobility. I find that those hip flexors are kind of like already so yanked and tight. Um, getting into like hip flexion stuff, I don't, I, I haven't seen yet in my experience a uh, high payoff compared to focusing on hip internal rotation, external rotation, and hip extension. Those three are the ones that I usually attack first and then kind of pepper in um, hip flexion specific stuff. So when you look at things like uh, a barbell squat, squats in general, split squats, lunges, things like that, those three are very much needed in order to do that. So I tend to spend my time focusing on that. Um, and I wanna go over three specific exercises that I teach in my kin stretch and that I do specifically almost on a daily basis to ensure that I'm constantly influencing um, tissue change. So the whole kind of concept behind kin stretch, and I've done a whole um, episode on it, is that I am now inserting information at a cellular level to influence tissue change. Imagine that every day you wake up, you have all these muscle cells waiting for input, ready for some sort of input to create a reaction. If I choose to go sit in a desk for 10 hours that day, all those muscle cells go, well, you're sitting, you are not moving your hip at all, I'm going to just stay here and make shit tight to make you more efficient at sitting. So that's why people feel super fucking tight over a long period of time when they're at a desk job for years, right? Whereas if I decide to do my cars routine every single uh, day, if I decide to do the three exercises I'm about to do and demonstrate um, on a daily basis, I'm constantly feeding information because remember like cells um, react to different things and specifically in this scenario, I'm talking about force. Force is gonna be the isometric contractions that we're gonna create in certain positions and if I continually do that over and over and over again, those muscle cells are going to create more resilient tissue and more like smarter tissue as I like to call it. And that allows you to create more change at a structural level with your um, ligaments and tendons and things like that, which will allow you to um, get more range of motion, but more importantly, more control in those ranges. So that's the biggest thing that I see value to kin stretch and the FRC principles is that you gain control of your joint, your ligaments, your tendons, your muscles in those end ranges where most of the time injury occurs. So that being said, if we can continually influence at a cellular level for our tissue to be more resilient, we're literally building an ironclad body. We're building a bulletproof thing that we are in right now, our meat and bones. So then when we go to the gym or we pick up our dog from the ground or we pick up our kid, our body is resilient enough to withstand that external force. So without further ado, we are going to get into these three exercises that you should be doing every single day. 
or at least a couple times a week to influence some serious change on those hips. So if you are just listening, I'm gonna do my best job to really describe what I am doing. But I highly suggest you hit the show notes after this and get to the probably, by the time I'm finished talking about explaining this, the nine minute mark of this episode to see the demonstration. So I'm gonna move my camera a little bit lower to get a better angle of what we're about to do. All right, oh my back just cracked, that's amazing. Okay, let's maybe just adjust this a little bit more. Okay, so I am going to be in a seated position with my legs super wide. I really hope these pants are gonna do me justice. So if I'm in a seated position, my legs are gonna be super wide. And from here, I'm going to drop. I'm gonna go on a little angle so you don't have a full on crotch shot the whole time. I'm gonna drop both legs over to my left side. And actually, I'm gonna go this way. So on my left side. So this back leg, my knees in line with the hip, the knees in line with my ankle. My left leg's in front, my left ankle's in line with my knee, my knee's in line with my hip. Hence the 90-90 position. So we're going to stretch out our left hip into external rotation, and we're gonna stay here a while. But the way we can get into external rotation a little bit more effectively is with my lumbar spine, I'm going to arch it and almost try to push my chest out and like if I had a Superman logo, I'm trying to show it off to the whole world. I am then going to use my hands to support and I'm going to lean forward until I feel a deep stretch in that left glute slash hip. What I don't want to see is people rounding their back, kind of like if you were doing a pigeon stretch in yoga, you're going to be a little bit more upright. So the more I can tilt that pelvis and that arching that low back, I am literally opening up my pelvis to get more into the deep stuff of the hip, which we're trying to influence. So in this position, I am holding this for two minutes. The reason behind the two minute mark, and again, you can do three, you can do four, but two minutes is usually the special number that they figured out that in at a cellular level, all the little stretch receptors are now shooting information back and forth waiting for instruction. And that's what we were kind of talking about before, about how we're going to be able to influence tissue change. Those muscle cells are waiting for information, excuse me, and we need to send some info with force. And how we're going to do that is we're in our end range. We are breathing deeply. I'm thinking belly breaths. Every inhale, I'm pushing against my thigh, and every exhale, I'm trying to hollow my diaphragm. We are going to create an isometric contraction on the outside of our joint. That being said, I'm gonna think of driving my left ankle and left knee down into the ground as hard as possible. When I say that, I want you to think of going to your gym or picking up literally the heaviest object in your house or the heaviest weight in your house, but I want you to think that you're trying to lift you know, a hundred pound dumbbell, your body's not gonna be loosey goosey to go pick it up. You're like, oh shit, it's a hundred pounds. I need to like make sure everything's tight, my core's on and I'm gonna pick that thing up. Same concept here. When I tell my people in kin stretch to start driving down, a lot of times they're not pushing down hard enough because I can see in their face they're just like, like calm and relaxed it needs to be like you're breathing hard you're irradiating as much pressure as possible to drive that leg down to create an isometric contraction it's like if you had your car in with the e-brake on with a fucking like 3,000 pounds inside it and you're trying to push it up a hill you're using maximal effort to get there that's what I want you to achieve we're sending a signal to all those muscle cells. We're creating that um, isometric contraction. We're sending that force, that external force and load into the tissue itself. So I do this for 10 seconds. Another thing I do to kind of help people create tension is with their hands, they're pushing into the ground along with their leg. You do that for 10 seconds, you're gonna let go, but you're not gonna lean back like, oh shit, like that was fucking hard. 
you're gonna throw yourself further into the stretch. Because anytime you do an isometric contraction, you kind of communicate to your nervous system to like take off that emergency break a little bit, right? So you'll notice that after you finish that contraction, you let go and you're like, oh, I can go a little bit further. From here with your new acquired range, we're now gonna do an isometric contraction on the opposite side of the hip. So we just did the outside and now we're gonna do the inside. So when I tell people to go again, we're gonna do something called a rails contraction where we're driving our same left ankle and same left knee up towards the ceiling. And literally, it's not gonna come off the ground, but you're gonna do everything you got to lift that thing up. After trying to lift it, what I want you to think of, actually before that, what I want you to think of is try not to like lean back. So if I lean back here, I can lift this leg no problem. But if I'm constantly pushing my torso forward, arching that low back and then try to lift, you're not gonna go anywhere, but you're gonna create a better contraction that's gonna be worthwhile. So, after the 10 um, seconds are up for both, so we do a 10 second contraction for pails, which is pushing down, and 10 second contraction of um, rails to create that isometric contraction on both sides of the joint. Now, we've created all this change at a cellular level and at a nervous system level. We have this new range of motion. We need to reinforce that this is our new normal. That, you know, we are going to challenge this new acquired range for our nervous system to remember that we have this amount of range of motion. So the next thing, and this is still part of the first exercise, I kind of like layer this together. So what we just did was a 90-90 position for hip external rotation with pails and rails. Now we're going to do an active range lift off with this same leg. So we're going to challenge our um, hip external rotation actively. So from there, what I'm going to do is going to take my left ankle and think of lifting it up off the ground and then back down. If you're watching, you notice that my entire torso did not break apart. The only thing moving was my leg. I did not lean back because again, if I lean back, poof, this guy can go up no problem. I'm like, I can hang out here all day. But if I'm trying to stay upright in this 90-90 position and now try to lift, it's a lot harder. Now I'm working my true active range within hip external rotation. So I'll usually do like five second holds five times. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side where I hold the stretch for two minutes, pails contraction, rails contraction, and then the active range lift offs. So we just covered hip external rotation. Freaking awesome, right? We're also going to do hip internal rotation. And this is where this stuff gets tricky. So I'm still in my 90-90 say for argument's sake that you know i flipped over i did my other side same thing you know did my little two minute stretch pails rails contraction contraction 10 seconds i did my lift offs everything's great now we're going to do hip internal rotation so if i now switched over sides i have my right leg forward and my left leg back in my 90 90 now to do hip internal rotation, I'm gonna take my torso and rotate it over to my left leg in the back. This hip is already into internal rotation. I'm leaning further forward to get some stretch in this hip. What I see a lot is a lot of people feel uncomfortable because this is not a comfortable position. So a lot of times what I'll get people to do have less um, range of motion in their hips is they can stay back here and try to get their torso as straight as possible, or they find that position where they try to rotate as much as possible, but keeping this nice and flat and then leaning in. So it's all kind of dependent on where you are with your mobility. Now, if I am leaning forward, I am again holding for um, two minutes. After the two minutes is done, I'm going to do a pales contraction, and in this case, I'm thinking about my left knee and left ankle again, pushing down as hard as possible. And then after the 10 seconds are done, I'm gonna try to get further into the stretch. And then I'm gonna do a rails contraction, which is the opposite, where I'm driving my knee 
an ankle off the ground up towards the ceiling. Remember, it's not gonna come off the ground. It'll only come off the ground if I lean so far back and it's like, oh, look at that, no problem. If I'm here, it's gonna be really hard to lift and that's what we want. We wanna create an isometric contraction in this hip. And again, in this position, you can push your hands into the ground or what I like to do is create fists and squeeze the crap out of my fists. Sometimes I'll have tennis balls, lacrosse balls, massage balls, whatever it is. Squeeze, 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 squeeze to create more tension. Now, we've done all this work, influenced the tissue, influenced our nervous system to give us a little bit more range. Just like the other side, where we did hip external rotation and we were doing active range liftoffs, so we gotta do active range liftoffs in hip internal rotation. So now I'm gonna rotate my torso to face the right. And from here, when I tell people in my class to lift, what you're gonna think about doing, keeping your left knee in contact with the ground, you're gonna lift your back ankle, holding it there, and then back down. I always tell people, in kin stretch, when your hands are up here by your chest and torso, makes things hard. When your hands place are, are placed down to the ground on both left and uh, right side, a little bit easier. If I lean over to my right hand, a little bit easier. And then if I go into my elbow like a side plank, even easier. So I always tell people, you gotta find a position where when I tell you to lift, you're not like, oh my God, and I'm leaning forward to get more. And this is not where it is. You wanna be in this upright position. When I tell you to lift, boom, you're lifting into internal rotation actively. And again, five second holds, and that's gonna do a lot of great things. What will happen, and I see this a lot, when people are new to kin stretch, to FRC, whatever it is, I see this in class all the time, I'll tell people, all right, lift, and then huge cramp in this outside of the hip, people do this thing, they're like, oh my God, what the hell's going on? And essentially what that means is you're sending a signal to your body, and your brain sending the signal to all the muscles involved in hip internal rotation actively. And they still don't really understand what the hell you're talking about. So they go, okay, well, I see that you want me to do something. It's not really coming out clear, so I'm gonna cramp, and hopefully that's what you want. It's not what we want, but that's kind of like a neurological, um, I guess, response. And you gotta fight through it. Like a lot of times, you know, you have to practice, 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 practice. And it's kind of the, what's it called? The, the lane or the, the pathway to actually having full control over your body. Now we just did hip external rotation, hip internal rotation, and now we gotta do hip extension. So again, remember hip extension is any time you extend your hip, so things like deadlifts, glute bridges, running, sprinting, all require adequate hip extension. And if you're doing lunges, you're putting your hip into extension. A lot of times people feel super, super, super tight on the backside of their thighs, so their quads, their hip flexors. So in this case, you want to work hip extension with pails and rails. So one of my favorite ways of doing this and because my floor is a little bit, um, well, not the floor, but the uh, space that I have is a little bit uh, hard on the knee, I highly, highly recommend that you have a mat or something for your knee. So essentially what we're going to do, and hopefully I have enough room here, I'm gonna have my right knee down and left leg Four, kind of like a hip flexor stretch, but we're not gonna just do a hip flexor stretch. What we're gonna do in this position, we're almost gonna go into a runner's pose. And I want this back knee to be as, well, my pants are tight. <laughs> so I don't rip these. So I'm gonna try to get my leg into almost like a runner's pose. And I'm literally just pushing my hip down. So in this position, I am working hip extension. I'm gonna hold this for two minutes, just like the other two. After the two minutes, I'm gonna create a pales contraction where I'm gonna push my knee into the ground. But how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna drive my heel up towards my bum. And now I'm gonna think of driving this knee forward 
into the ground as hard as possible. And I'm squeezing my ass as hard as possible. Hold, 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 hold. And from there, I'm going to dip down a little bit further because I just communicated to my nervous system. And then my rails, I'm going to think of taking my heel up towards the ceiling and trying to get my knee off the, the mat. But it's not going to come off the mat. But, again, we are trying to create an isometric contraction. So if I try to do that right now, you can almost see like my glute turns on and I'm trying to drive it up. And this is really freaking hard, but this is how I'm getting that isometric contraction for all my hip extenders. I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding, and I'm relaxing. Now, we just did a lot of great stuff for hip extension, and now I need to challenge it. So, a great way to do that is I'm going to be lying down in a prone position. I think you guys can still see me. Both my high hands are going to go on top of each other. And I know it's kind of got out of the frame, but it's more so to see um, my legs doing the work. So my forehead is going to be down. I'm going to take my right heel, because that's the one that I just worked on. I'm going to think of squeezing my glute first and going into hip extension. So again, my forehead is going to be down. and I'm just holding this isometrically. Hold, 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 and then back down. What I don't want to see, and this is how people cheat, is they'll lift, but they open up their hip to get more. You want to think of having the two bony parts of your pelvis pushing down into the ground, and then you're just working on hip extension. What I don't want to see is the knee bend. You want to keep it nice and straight, and you're squeezing, 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 hold, back down. Squeezing, 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 hold, back down. So now we just challenged our new acquired range for hip extension. So, little note on that guy. Because I see this all a lot in my kin stretch and even my clients that I train. When people have terrible glutes, just that don't fire or turn on or activate, they'll tend to feel it in their hamstring and low back. What that tells me is that their body just doesn't understand how to extend the hip through the glute. A lot of it, I just tell people like, slow down, think with your brain that, okay, I need to squeeze my ass. I need to squeeze my ass and now I'm going to lift my heel up. And a lot of times it's learning how to make that brain and muscle connection. And it does take time. Sometimes I'll tell people to like lift up, hold it for like 10 seconds. Cause sometimes the longer it is, you have more time for your brain and muscles to kind of figure out what the hell is going on. And um, over time it will improve, but sometimes it just doesn't work and you need to throw in a different exercise. But for the sake of this video, because we're almost reaching um, 30 minutes, I'm gonna keep it with those three. So we have hip external rotation and then for pails and rails, and then we have those active range liftoffs. We have our hip internal rotation, and then we have those hip internal rotation um, active range liftoffs. Then we had our hip extension pails and rails, and then we had the prone uh, hip extension active range liftoffs. So, that being said, if you did this like once a day, so all that time, right? You have three exercises, two minutes each. And the active range of liftoffs, this will take less than 10 minutes. If you did this every single day, once a day, guaranteed in three months, you're going to see a huge difference, huge difference in your squat, in your you know, running, in your lunging, in like anything that deals with hips. Like sometimes people just, don't want to put in the effort and this is this is like it, it, you gotta grind it out over and over and over again and these are the ones that i use in my classes all the time and people already say like that are consistent once a week that after a month they're like yeah my hips feel awesome my shoulders feel awesome because we're also doing shoulder things in there but primarily like hips is the epicenter of our bodies it requires a lot of mobility and movement and you know, if we constantly focus on those three kind of positions and variations of those positions, hip mobility is taken care of. So I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and in the comments, like on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, like 
write a comment. I will respond back and give you some feedback, give you some other exercises that could help. But these three are like prime, like this is what you need. Um, so all those people listening, hit the show notes to watch this. And also make sure you subscribe to my channel because I post a lot of stuff.